What is up YouTube? My name is James. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video here today. And today, I'm bringing you guys a video on how to correct your import settings to be the best they can be. So in Lightroom, the import settings are super, super important. It's often that people don't know what each setting means. Learning what each option means can really, really help you in your productivity and workflow in Lightroom. The video succeeding this one will be how to organize your Lightroom catalog, and these two videos will kind of go hand in hand. So be sure to look out for that one. Anyway, guys, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys. My name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Okay, guys, so here we are in Lightroom once again in our brand new catalog, and I'm going to show you guys the best import settings for Lightroom. So simply what you want to do right away is go to File, and import photos and video. So what this is going to do is going to take you to this little window here and you're going to have a shit ton of settings and a lot of stuff you probably have no idea what it means. But rest assured, I'm going to help you guys how to do that. You can either copy your raw files to DNGs and you can keep both files and you have your raw files in one section and your DNGs in one section. What these are is pretty much a compressed, not even compressed, it's just a raw file that just takes up less space and it's more compatible with other programs. As far as I know, um, I always use DNGs because um, I think it's just easier across all platforms. And also, my Sony A7R2 files, so for some reason, don't import to Lightroom, so I have to copy them as DNGs in a separate program first, then import them. So I always actually choose the Add button whenever I'm importing. But if you want to use copy as DNGs, what you can do is you can have your raw files that you actually take from your camera in one folder, and you have your raw files dngs at another folder so simply what i would personally do is so let's say let's go to our let's go to our uh lightroom folder here we have lightroom here so simply if we have a folder called um photos then we're going to click go into here we're going to have our shoots and then dng raws so you have two things here. You have our shoots and TNG raws. What our shoots mean is we're going to be putting all of our shoots, like the files, the, the folders for our shoots in this folder. So, for example, let's say we had a shoot today. It's the 4th of December. So, I would name it 12.4.17 um, um, party shoot. I don't know. And then inside this folder, we're going to make a folder called the raws. And all the raws out of our camera are going to go in that folder. Then. We have our DNG raws, and all of our DNG raws are just going to go in this folder flat out. Like, no folders inside. Every single DNG raw that we have is going to go in this folder. So, I'm going to show you guys how to do that pretty much. So, what we're going to do is select a source. All of our raws are already going to be inside that folder called um, in our shoots folder. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our photos, our shoots inside here, into our raws select that normally the raw files would be in there but obviously there's nothing in there right now then we're going to go to file handling file handling is very important so i'm going to go through every single little like uh option here and we're going to go through it so build preview standard that's what i usually keep it as you can change it if you want i just keep mine as standard it's nothing important um build smart previews i don't do that either um imports don't import suspected duplicates i keep that checked because i don't want um duplicate other photos possibly getting in here somehow in case it's a glitch in Lightroom. Um, make a second copy too. I don't do that either. And it's a collection. If you have any collection that you want to add the pictures to, I, you can do that by clicking this and then, or you can even create a collection if you want to. But I don't usually do that. I just do it on my own. Once again, it's Lightroom. Next is file renaming. And yes, you want to rename your files because the raw files that you have in your camera are going to be dirty as hell. Um, it's going to be some crazy shit, and it's going to be very unorganized. So, I have a system in which I name my files, and I'll show it to you right now. So, you go to edit. You have either two choices, in my opinion. My choice number one, the one that I use personally, is a sequence number. So, pretty much what you're going to do is, uh, I'll backspace this right now, and you're going to go to number here, and you're going to hit insert on sequence number, five digits. I'll keep it five digits in case. My picture scopes like 99,000 my catalog, which it will one day. You don't have to reset it. Anyway, you hit insert, hit done, and now once you upload your pictures, it's going to start at 1, 2, 3, 4, and every picture will have a number. And that's the way I personally do it because I think it keeps the best, keeps the most 
or wow, I can't speak. It keeps it the most organized for me, and it's just super simple. And obviously, if you're start number one here, it's gonna start at one. If you wanted to start at any other number, let's say nine thousand five hundred sixty-four, it will your numbering will start at nine thousand five hundred sixty-four upon import. So I keep mine at one though. And then extensions leave as is. So you can actually keep your extension, like your uh, DNG uppercase or lowercase, or just leave it. I leave it yeah, not DNG lowercase. I'm not a fan of uppercase letters really. But anyway, your other choice is using much more like complex and more like uh, details in your file naming. So what you can do is actually is we're gonna go to, um, edit again, get rid of custom sequence. And so if you want to be more organized and stuff like that. If you like having more than just numbers in your file renaming, what you can do is, let's say you want to put your initials, my initials are JG underscore, then you want to put the date. Let's say you want to put the date in it every single time. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to hit uh, custom text here, and then you're going to put underscore 2017 um, for the year. Then you're going to put, um, you either put, the shoot name in another in another custom text or you, you can do is simply just um, put a sequence number again so you again your files have uh, names and all that like uh, numbers and then you hit done and then in the custom text you just put the date 12.4 and now your um, files will be named jg underscore 12.4 underscore 2017 underscore 00001.dmg but the only downfall with the custom text thing is that every time you import you have to change the custom text or it'll end up being jg underscore untitled underscore 2017 underscore 000001.dmg which you don't want to be honest it's not recommended that you have that untitled in there because it's like a lot of words like a lot of letters and you just don't want that it's super ugly anyway i i'm gonna keep mine though at just the sequence number because that's what i like personally so that's what we're gonna do so insert there done Next is apply during import. You can choose develop settings like a preset to apply to all the pictures upon import. If you have an idea what they're going to look like already, you want to apply maybe a slight tone curve or uh, exposure adjustment, then yeah, you can do that if you, have a, if you have a preset for it at least, but I don't do that stuff. And then as for metadata, um, we're going to go into this right now. It's pretty much copyright settings. Um, we're going to go to um, edit presets. And here we have um, my custom one. Uh, so pretty much what you want to do is uh, go down to four tabs, I believe the fourth tab, which is IPTC copyright. Give it a check mark, and under copyright, you're going to want to put um, C in parentheses, uh, space, oh, sorry, not space, 2017, space, your name. My name is James Giamatta, so I'll put that as my name, and then you're going to put right here under, under uh, copyright status, copyrighted, or public domain. The difference is... Copyrighted will mean that this photo is copyrighted. No one can use it without your permission. And then public domain is simply anyone can use this at any time for any reason, whether they want to make money off it or not. So I'm going to keep mine copyrighted just because I don't care. I just don't want, as I want to be, have the option to sell my photos if I can. If it's public domain, then really nothing I can do about it. But honestly, this stuff is really just like, doesn't matter too much. I just like to have it anyway, just in case, you know. But then you get done. And uh, you can save as a new preset. I'm not going to do that. Don't save. And uh, we're just going to go back to my other one. Right there. Then you can apply keywords to your uh, photos that you import. To all, all of them. So let's say the shoot was a party. And it was for a business called. Um, let's say. Um, IBM. Let's say. I don't know. A business party for IBM. You shot it. And so you would name it. Let's say party comma IBM comma uh, flash because use the flash in the pictures um, candid because there are probably candid photos in there uh, all that stuff like that that's like that stuff that you can do you can use a camera that you use let's say a Sony a7r stuff like that the lens 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 like that's stuff that you can do to like really like give your photos more organization next is the destination of the photos that you want them to have so for example is where the dngs are going to go so what you'd want to do is you want to go into one organize to one folder not by date or by original folders into one folder and now you're going to choose where you want the photos to go 
So it's going to be under Photos, DNG Raw. And all your DNG Raws are always going to go there. You never have to change that full, that uh, selection. It's always going to go there. But always make sure it's going there whenever you import so you don't fuck it up. And also, in the subfolder, do not check that. That's only if you're going to use subfolders for your Raws and you don't want to do that stuff. So, yeah. Don't do that. And now, if you're not going to copy as DNG, you're just going to add them as raw files. It's pretty simple. You just go where you at, where the raw files already are. It's the same settings as these. And then you just have your regular metadata applied to your import settings. And you're good to go. Simply. Anyway, guys, that is how you import photos in Lightroom. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please be sure to have a like, comment, and subscribe. This is the second video in my little Lightroom series. Um, the next one's going to be on how to organize your catalogs. And lastly, guys, my name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.